So um, the journey to parenthood for some may be very long and tedious. So in this case, most people will start off with a fertility health consultation. So whether you choose to postpone plans for starting a family or you're planning to start a family, it's good to get a fertility health consultation early so that you can detect problems soon and early enough sometimes to optimize treatment and your womb condition in order to achieve pregnancy sooner. So at this consult, sometimes all that may be needed is just some advice on the frequency and timing of lovemaking and to understand the conditions that are required for a higher chance of natural pregnancy. And that may be all that's necessary for some. Unfortunately, um, for others, as I mentioned, uh, it may take longer and you may need to resort to other forms of treatment. So most people understand or know about IUI and IVF but they are not quite aware of other modes of treatment that are available to help enhance your natural chances of conception or actually enhance your chances of success with uh, assisted reproductive technician uh, like IUI and IVF. So surgery is one of these modes of treatment and the aim of surgery is to restore or enhance the natural chances of conception uh, and Sometimes they may be performed before IVF to improve chances of success of IVF. So this includes conditions of the ovary like endometriosis. This is an ultrasound showing three eggs. We aim to basically get more than one egg. Around two to three or three to four eggs would be ideal. Too many is not safe because uh, we're just going to shoot the sperm in. So if you have many, many follicles, that's not ideal for IUI in case you get too many pregnancies. Um, some of which may be in the tube and not in the womb. So that's a very dangerous condition called ectopic pregnancy. So the overall success rates along with supraovulation, that means with more than one egg coming out, is 20%. If you do not use supraovulation, that means you rely on just naturally one egg coming out or just uh, oral medications, the success rates are going to be lower. So the cost range of each cycle is about $1,200 to $1,500 for the medications and the scans and the IUI as well as the sperm concentration by the lab. Now, IVF is different from IUI. Essentially, we want to get as many eggs as possible. So we use a lot of injections, hormonal injections, to stimulate the ovaries to get this. So if you can see the ultrasound picture here, in comparison with the previous one, there are many, many more eggs that we hope to get to see on the ultrasound. So these eggs, again, can be monitored on the ultrasounds for their growth. And once it's ready, the in trigger injections are used again to trigger the final maturation. We do not want ovulation where the egg comes out of the ovary. Instead, we are going to extract the eggs directly from the women's ovaries in a procedure called OPU or egg retriever. And this picture shows how it's done. The ultrasound probe is inserted into the vagina and the needle is introduced. This procedure is relatively painless, relatively simple and very safe. These eggs are then uh, passed to the embryologist or Dr. Balaji here in the lab will then uh, perform the necessary to fertilize the egg. So what we need to know is that in vitro fertilization is not a magical bullet to get pregnant. It is essentially an accelerated means of trying for pregnancy because it bypasses natural fertilization. You do not need as many sperm around the egg. In fact, you only need one sperm to fertilize one egg. So the overall success rates are about 35 to 50 percent. This is considered quite efficient. It decreases with age because um, of the egg quality as well as the sperm quality. That is the limitation in IVF which cannot overcome your inherent sperm and egg quality. So it's an option for couples with difficulty conceiving for longer term duration, mainly because it's the most efficient way of trying compared to IUI or natural trying and is best suited for men, especially with severely low sperm counts. So the cost range, of course, is slightly inhibitive, $15,000 to $20,000, but there are government subsidies as well as Medisafe available. The other thing is, if you are pregnant from this, generally your pregnancy will be highly medicated because it's artificially supported. So the conclusion is please go for a fertility health consultation early, especially if you have been actively trying to conceive for 6 to 12 months without success because our fertility rates can only decline with age. So the typical message is there's no better time than now. Uh, fertility treatments should not be considered the magical bullet to get pregnant and then you seek any recommended treatments early to optimise your chances of conception.
If you are going to do a conventional way of insemination, which is actual in vitro fertilization, you will be adding thousands of moving sperm to one egg. Whereas in ICSI, we need to remove these nurse cells, which would be a hindrance while we inject the sperm into the egg, and pick up one good looking and moving sperm and inject it into the egg. So that is ICSI. Only mature eggs can be injected. The immature eggs will not fertilize even if I give them a good sperm. Okay, in the first window you see a video which shows that how semen sample looks like under the microscope. You can see some of them are moving, some of them are not moving, there will be debris, everything is there. So we have to isolate the good swimmers which is shown in the second slide. So you can see that all of them are moving almost 100% and they are very clean compared to the first one. So this sample will be used for either conventional way of insemination or ICSI. ICSI. So in ICSI, we actually pick up a good moving and good looking sperm, handsome sperm. And actually now we don't want this to move, so we slash the tail so that it doesn't move and pick up by a fine glass needle. It's taken to the egg which is held by suction and the needle goes through the egg. The sperm is deposited into the egg. So after this, successful addition of sperm into the egg is done. So after this, all these eggs with the sperm are returned to the incubator. So next day morning, we come and check whether the eggs are fertilized. You can see in the second red window that the egg is presented with two circles in the center. So this is the egg with normal fertilization. Anything other than this, either with one circle or more than two circles, are considered as eggs with abnormal fertilization, which are not usable. So the next day onwards, we look uh, at the eggs, whether they have become embryos or not. So about 24 hours after that, we see a four cell, and another day later, it becomes an eight cell. So one more day, it becomes a mass of cells called marula, and on day five, it becomes a ball of cells. This ball of cells is called as blastocyst. The outer rim, which we call as trophectodum, forms the placenta, and an, another group of cells called inner cell mass they form the baby when the pregnancy is established. So once we observe all this, we grade the embryos and then the good quality embryos are picked up. They are loaded into a plastic tubing called the catheter and it is passed to Dr. Janice and Dr. Janice puts it into the womb under the ultrasound guidance. About two weeks later, the patient comes back for a blood test to see whether she's pregnant. And another two weeks later, if she's positive, another two weeks later, an ultrasound scan will be done by Dr. Janice to see whether the pregnancy is viable. Right? Any excess good quality embryos can be frozen in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius, and it can be kept for uh, any number of years. So when our patient wants to use these frozen embryos, we can thaw them and then again do an embryo transfer to achieve another pregnancy. So in Singapore, we have a standard to follow. Actually, all these IVF centers and the labs in Singapore are audited by an Australian agency based on the recommendation from Ministry of Health Singapore. So we need to achieve certain standard to be functioning, first of all. And then the standard is not set low or in the middle bar, it's very high bar. So all the labs must meet this. Then on top of that, every year, all these labs are actually monitored by Ministry of Health for the performance. So there is a quality control and quality assurance maintained by all the labs. The differences could be the embryologists who are handling the gametes and embryos, and then the nutritive substances that I spoke about, the culture medium, may be different between the labs. But nowadays, all of them are standardized. From this question, I understand that it's your first cycle failure, which can happen to nearly 50% of the patients if you are 30 or below. So you may try one more cycle with the same center. How TCM can enhance fertility for both males and females? I think you have heard from the two doctors here, medicine is very advanced in doing what the body cannot do. So for example, if through fertility screening, you find like you are low in some hormones. So with medication, it's very effective to bring it back. Or for example, if you need some help out of the body, right? Yeah, and all this can take place in the lab. 
But for TCM, the focus is very much different because for TCM, we are still focusing on the body itself, what the body can do naturally on its own. And our objective is to employ the different TCM treatments to boost that organic function. Most of you would be familiar with the use of Chinese medicine. So Chinese medicine is like your fertilizer to nourish whether it's a male, female. Yeah. So from Western, we know like the supplements, uh, zinc, selenium, etc. that can help. But from TCM perspective, um, the angle is slightly different. So you hear a lot about oh, strengthening the kidney, how it's about always the kidney yang for the males and kidney yin for the females. But that's not true. It's always about a balance. So um, Chinese medicine can do that, can address uh, the balancing in the constitution. Acupuncture, on the other hand, is to improve. We always talk about improving blood flow, improving oxygen to your reproductive organs so that with sufficient oxygen blood flow, then our organs perform better. So better blood flow to your ovaries can help the eggs to grow better and better blood flow to the womb can help with the lining thickness that can then um, help with the implantation process. So generally, we advise couples to come together for the first consultation. Usually, before couples come, they sort of have a feeling, whose problem is it? <laughs> but for TCM perspective, it's always working on both together. Yeah, there's always something to work on. So um, coming in together, going through the journey together, it's just that maybe for one party, we might say, okay, in your case, we might have to uh, do acupuncture and Chinese medicine simultaneously. And then for the other couple, maybe it's just one of the two treatments. It all depends also like whether we are trying naturally, we are going for IVF, or if it's a history of miscarriages, then we go through that first session, we set timelines, and goals and then we work out the treatments accordingly. Let's say if they are embarking on uh, IVF maybe in two months time. So in the two months of preparation then we will help to prepare the couple uh, maybe through acupuncture and Chinese medicine and once the IVF drugs start to kick in uh, then usually we will take away the Chinese medicine and just go with the acupuncture. we have been trying for a year with no success to always get a fertility screening done. So these are like your data. So you know what is the baseline. And with that results, you come to the TCM and we have objective data to work with. And then we can say, okay, let's do TCM for three months, six months. What are the results that we are aiming for? Or what are we expecting? And that baseline data will be very useful for us to measure the outcome. I think many of us, you know, think like, wow, so not safe, right? Imagine I'm pregnant and I'm still doing acupuncture. But on the contrary, actually, acupuncture is very safe, even for pregnant ladies. So in fact, we advocate, we encourage our patients, even when they test positive for their pregnancy, to continue their treatments all the way until they pass their first trimester. Simply because sometimes patients ask, when is it more important to have acupuncture? Is it just before embryo transfer or is it after embryo transfer or once we test positive then that's okay you know we can stop all treatments because many women are still not comfortable with the idea like I'm pregnant and I'm doing acupuncture so there are points that are not suitable to do during pregnancy and definitely we're very careful to avoid these points as well as the points on the abdomen so once after transfer we don't do points on the abdomen we are very careful what points not to do and after the positive test, we still continue because you still have to continue to nurture, continue to drive the circulation to the womb to support the growth and the development. Until we are about 11 or 12 weeks, then we will stop. Sometimes patients get so used to the treatment, then they say, can we continue into our second and third trimester? Uh, well, essentially, there's no danger, but there's also no benefit. But if patient feels comfortable, then yeah, we can continue. But if not, usually we stop at the end of first trimester. 
Unfortunately, implantation is not completely understood, which is the reason why we haven't been able to get round to inherent chances of success after putting in the embryo. But what we do know is that the embryo is the most important factor, or rather uh, the main determining factor for implantation. And if the embryo that we put in is normal, most of the time, more than 50% of the time, we're going to get implantation. So the embryo, how good it is, whether it's genetically normal, a lot of it is determined by your age and the inherent quality of your eggs and sperm. Then we talk about the condition of the lining, the soy as Ms. Sia puts it. So there are some investigations and things that can be done to check whether your lining as well as your overall body's immune system is able to accept these embryos which are half foreign to you. So some of these investigations can be done and if things are discovered, things like an overactive immune system, then some medications or adjuncts can be added to your IVF protocol in order to support this implantation. Or if you're trying naturally or using IUI, these adjuncts can also be used to try and improve implantation. But aside from that, since it's not completely understood, we will not be able to completely add anything to achieve 100% implantation. If you are aiming to get a scan done that will best evaluate the lining of the womb as well as your ovaries, then you should go slightly after your menses ends and before ovulation occurs. Because once ovulation occurs, it's difficult to assess the lining. For the guy, preferably if you want to submit a sperm specimen on the spot, then in general, you need to have a window of abstinence for about 3 to 5 days. So if you just did it yesterday, then it will be a bit difficult for you to get the sperm submitted on that day.